What's up, everyone? Welcome to the special event FOMC live stream. Hope everybody's having a good day. And I hope you can't hear the background noise because they are doing some serious remodeling on my building and it's loud in here, but hopefully you guys can't hear it. I know, Ken, I know. I, know, I, need, a, I need an FOMC theme song. I agree. I was just thinking about that on the way in. All right, so the plan today is to enter this trade here. Here in a few minutes, a few minutes before the FOMC data is released, hopefully get a little bit of a vol crush between now and when the press conference starts without too much movement is the idea. And then um, and then just after the FOMC presser starts and Jerome takes the stand, I'm going to enter this one. That's the uh, 30 delta long strangle. So the idea there is we get a nice ball crush after the data is released, after he kind of jumps on the mic for a couple minutes. So we got a nice ball contraction. And then we get in with the long strangle and we get a decent sized move enough to uh, hit a profit target. So, Kelvin, thanks for uh, posting that um, 30 delta. Looks like it has performed better than the 50 delta straddle. So I'll be doing um, I'll be doing that one instead. And I have not taken any. Zero DTE trades today. If you've ever traded on FOMC, you know if you try to sell premium at the open, you almost a lot of times get zero theta decay. In fact, sometimes the premiums actually increase. So you're sitting there with all the risk with none of the reward. And that's why we uh, look to put it on right before the data is released. So I'm looking at the uh, $4 strikes on each side. In this case, that would be the 4470 and the 4425. Then I'm buying the uh, 10 cent wings. Which is about 65 points away in this case. So currently trading around 775. I'll go ahead and put my order in at 775. No takers at 775. How about 770? Filled at 770. So now I'm going to go in and put my OCO exits on the uh, 
just on the short strikes. So I'll put my first profit target at about 30%. So let's just call it, I'll just put it at five bucks for now. <clears throat> And I'll put my stop at eleven seventy five, uh, four dollars over. Then I'll do another profit target at three bucks. I'll end up taking these off before the press conference starts, but just putting something in there to have in place. All right, ready to rock and roll, Jerome. What do you got for us? Data comes out in seven and a half minutes. And then 30 minutes later, the press conference will start. So technically 540 would be 30%. So I'll change that to 540. So if I get 30%, I will take off half and then I'll take the rest off. If uh, once, once we get till right before the press conference starts. So as, as I was saying before, if you've never traded, if you've never sold premium on FOMC day, you probably would have sold something very similar to this right at the open. And it'd be sitting right here. I didn't check the pricing right at the open. I don't know if anybody else did, but um, most likely didn't get any decay. It would have been, you'd have been sitting there and been able to get in at the exact same or maybe even better prices right now than you would have at the open. So what we should see, once the data is released, we'll start to see some decay coming in. You'll notice in the trade log that that 30% profit target of the 12 trades, so going back to the FOMC meetings to the beginning of 2022, so there's there's been 12, that 30% profit target hit before the press conference started one, two, One, two, three, four, five of 12. So almost half the time, you'll get to that 30% profit target before just closing it. Oh, wow. Theta junkie. That's interesting. Good for you. That is not that is not a normal FOMC day, I would I would say. That's a that's a lot of decay for FOMC day. The good news is the range has been super tight today. It looks like we got a high of about 
44.61, a low of around 44.48. So it follows the, uh, the long strangle. I don't put that on until about five minutes after the press conference starts. So that'll go on at 2.35 Eastern, 1.35 Central. So whatever the 30 deltas are at that point. YouTube TV. YouTube TV. Uh, MRP uh, scroll up. There's a whole discussion about it this morning. It just, it tests better overall with the 30 Delta. Here's the test for the 30 Delta strangle. Compare that to the 50 Delta. So the way I kind of compared it was margin required. So if you do five contracts of the 50 Delta, looking at about, well, the last time was about 10K. So that's what I was kind of basing it off of. It's going to vary, obviously, based on levels of implied volatility. So if you compare that to the 30 Delta using 10 contracts, margin requirement, trying to get somewhat similar margin requirements, you can see the, uh, the 30 Delta, much more profit using the same same capital requirements, P&L 122,000 over these last 13 trades versus 81,000. Better CAGR, better capture rate. All right, about 40 seconds until the data release. Yeah, that's exactly right, Laura. You'll see that it actually does perform well. It's just your, your profit targets don't hit until after the data release but it's good to see you got some decent decay prior to you can see they pumped a little juice into these premiums after i entered all right getting a little movement going
Initial reaction markets moving a little bit lower, starting to see a little bit of decay come in. You can also see the, you know, the expected move on the zero day options to start the day was like 27. It's still at 24. And that kind of gives you an idea of how well that premium holds up until now. Getting a little move lower. Stop is at 1170. It's currently trading at about nine bucks. Oh, this is pretty normal. Data comes out, market's going to move. The hope is it just doesn't move too much. So as expected, interest rates left unchanged. If we get a bounce here, should see some premium get sucked out. The market movement, I mean, the, the, the zero interest rate change, that was, that was already known. I mean, that was pretty much a given. What's going to move the market is, is the statement and how the market perceives the future movements of the Fed. Uh, JBPR, it depends on how wide. So if you set up an iron condor in TOS as an example, the buying power required is based on the width you use between your shorts and your longs. So if you do SPX and you go 50 wide, that's usually about 5,000 per contract minus the credit received. Yeah, good point, Ken. You got to make sure because we're getting in and out in the same day. You want to, you've got to have a over 25K to avoid the pattern day trade restrictions.
Uh, a GUI, I'll do the long strangle at uh, here in about 30 minutes. I wouldn't plan on doing zero DTE with Tradier yet. They're they're still working on their OCO orders. Hopefully they get there. All right, getting a bounce. It's starting to see a little decay coming in now. I'm just looking at the analyze graph, you know, when it bounced at the peak of that little bounce, it was my spread was up, you know, with 10 contracts it was up six or 700 bucks. Kind of drop back down. Now it's pretty much break even at this point. Price is kind of, they'll be jumping around a lot. Yep. The exact center of your graph is where you're going to see the most decay. So, you know, if price was up there, we'd, we'd be in the profit, obviously. But And then, of course, on a move higher is typically when you see a little bit more decay. If price is moving down, premium is usually holding better. You should be able to do this, something similar with option strat. No, I did not do a Rick at the open. My plan today was just to do the, the two FOMC trades. Yeah, option strat. I think you got two S's in there. I think it's just option strat.com. There's a free, the free version gives you a lot of probably what you need. Uh, there is a paid version that we have a discount to. If you check the FAQ channel, um, I can't remember exactly what the difference is between the paid and the free, but I know the free version gives you a decent risk profile graph. All right, it's kind of keeps coming down to that 4435 level and 
bouncing. Let's see if that's going to hold or if it's going to push through. Yeah, rules. A lot of people with IB use that option strat. Well, they keep kind of taking premium out and pumping it back in here. Well, we're about 15 minutes in. Spread is currently trading pretty close to where we got in. We bounced up another five points. That would be pretty well centered. That would that would put us in the profit a little bit, but not too crazy movement at this point. Discount, I've gotten the same same response. We are aware of the issue, but we have no expected timeline on when it will be fixed. Yeah, they better have a team working on it. <laughs> Need to get a bigger team working on it. Russell and Dow are still green. NASDAQ and ES are red. 
Gold and silver are green. Notes are flat. Bonds are slightly green. Ten-year yield down quarter percent. Oil and natty gas are down. Grains are up. Euro is euro and the pound are pretty flat. Bitcoin flat. VIX is slightly green now. So definitely not seeing a whole lot of uh, volatility crush like we do sometimes. Don't think we're going to get to our 30% profit target before the presser starts. Bouncing above I forgot you're coming today. Uh, for some reason, I had in my head you're coming tomorrow. Yeah. I have some leftover steak, but I'm running around. I'll smell it. Yep. Yeah, I just got done eating right before the, uh, let's see, stream. Oh, you heard me talking to Neil? You, were, you guys weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> Did a little ribeye and zucchini on the uh, Blackstone. I needed a good pre-FOMC meal, you know. Hope I just don't fall asleep though. That would kind of want to take a nap. Maybe Jerome will keep me awake. <laughs> Doubtful. <coughs> the old Jerome press conference. That is a good, that's good television to take a nap to. Better in golf. Yeah, 
Gotcha. Yeah, JBPR. Um, so what I'm doing here for this FOMC trade is this here. So just like the back test shows. So the idea, just to kind of refresh, the idea behind this one is all the premium, usually the premium holds until right before the data is released. And so we put on a, we sell premium right before, usually get some decay right after that without much of a movement. And then, um, so we, so we benefit from that. Cause a lot of the movement usually comes either during or after the press conference. And so we just we put this on right before the data release, catch some decay, get out. I'll get out here in about um, here in about two minutes. Currently, the trade's up about eight hundred. If we get a little bounce, that would be ideal here in the next couple minutes. Uh, Ryan, PI position size with the expectation that I could take max loss on the, uh, well, I do that for every trade, but yeah, specifically for the, the strangle that I'll put on here shortly. Kind of similar to Rick. I'm either going to hit my profit target or it's going to end up where it ends up. little five point push here in the next minute would be just fine. Start working my order here. So 540 would be 30%. It's currently trading at 690. So we're not going to hit the 30%. Let's see. I'm going to put my order at 620. See if we get a little bounce here in the next minute. There we go. There we go. A little more decay. All right, so it's it's time to exit. It's about five minutes before the press conference. Looks like we're up about 1,400. Closed at 655 and... Six forty, so close half at six fifty five, half at six forty. So nice little quick profit.
got in at uh, got in at seven seventy, out at six fifty five and six forty. So a little over two hundred bucks per contract. Excuse me, a little over a dollar per contract. So now next uh, next on the agenda is the long strangle at about 30 delta. I'll wait till a few minutes after the press conference starts. Yeah, my longs are pretty much worthless. Well, that one's worth, yeah, I'd probably get out at five cents on the uh, calls and five cents on the put. So, yeah, I'll just keep those. If we get a, you know, have to get a pretty crazy move, but I'll just hold on to those. Maybe we'll get some value out of them if we do get a decent move one direction. So 30 delta on the call side is about the 4460 strike. On the put side is the 4430. As of now, I'll give it another five, six, seven minutes. Jerome taking the stand in about 40 seconds. Two, one, one. Oh, that's a Humpty Dumpty. That's a portfolio margin trade. Ryan P., are you part of the portfolio margin group? Gotcha. Yeah, check out the Humpty Dumpty trade. It's a beauty. All right, so 30 delta now is about the 44.55 and the 44.25. It's currently trading at 9.45. It's trading at about 13 bucks earlier, so that just kind of gives you an idea of the decay. Not, not at those strikes, but at 30 delta. I was looking at it pre pre-fed. Jerome is on the stand. All 
market popping back up. Now we're at the forty four sixty five, forty four forty. Give it a couple minutes. This market took a little bounce as soon as Jerome took the stand. S and P NASDAQ back in the green. Now look at the VIX. VIX is now was in the green just a little bit ago. Now down two and a half percent. So that's definitely seeing some decay come out now. All right, going in at the 65 calls and the 35 puts. So, well, give it a minute. Maybe we'll do the uh, 60 calls. 60 calls and 35 puts, trying to get filled at 1020. Filled at 1020. Along the 60 calls and the 35 puts. We're closest to 30 delta. All right, Jerome, say something stupid. So in at uh, in at ten twenty. So ten twenty times point three five plus ten twenty equal so thirteen seventy five. Call it. Is my profit target. And I'm going to do, I'll close it. If that hits, I'll close nine of 10 and then see if there's any runner potential. Yep, 35% is the profit target. So if we can get a quick push up to about 44.64 on the upside, it'd be about a 15 point move. Or 
call it a 4430 on the downside. That's if it happens quickly. Jerome looks tired today. <laughs> he doesn't have his spry, spry little look to him today. All right, so we're back above where we started. right at about where we started, I should say. Anybody held their uh, iron condor? It's up at about 50% now. Dick K, just saw your message. It's too bad. I have to wait another day. All right, Jerome's already taking questions. Just use some of your food stamps, Dick K. I know you qualify. If we get a move just anywhere close to the expected move for the day, we'll be in good shape with our little long strangle. Down at uh, 44.25 to the downside, about 44.80 to the upside. I scalped a little futures on that bounce, cut a little bit of that bounce, but 
I'm gonna I'm gonna stay flat directionally here. VIX is down 1.7. It was down like two and a half a few minutes ago. So I know I did this in the past, but what is this uh, FOMC iron condor, the one we put in pre-data pre drop? What does this do if we hold it a little bit longer? Let's say... Uh, two thirty-five. Not as good. Holding it till 3 p.m. Eastern is about the same as when we took it off. Profit wise, win rate slightly less. Yeah, that 225 right before the press conference looks to be the ideal one. VIX back down, minus 2.6. Uh, I've traded a one DTE strategy a tiny bit. Uh, here's a back test. Using 25 Delta, 100 points wide, entering in the morning one DTE, closing the trades before the close market close basically this is old this last time i updated this was may let's see what it looks like now this performance has been pretty flat year to date on the one dte on this version anyway But I haven't uh, I haven't done enough extensive testing on one DTE to find anything that I'm just gung ho about. But if you find something in your option omega testing, definitely feel free to post. I wouldn't mind having some one DTE stuff.
All right, market hasn't really moved much. Going to need a move to get out of our valley, valley o' death. Our NDX double calendar. It's got a little little profit coming in. TGIF is up about looks like about eighteen hundred or so. Well, that's all over the place. I'm not sure exactly what what I'd get filled out on that. The 6.7 DTE that I left some on. Uh, looks like it's currently trading at about 5.20. What did I? I got out of those at 5.65, so I did better taking them off previously. I'll, uh, I'll hold those a little bit longer, though. Looks like our time fly. Got in at 270. Price is bouncing all over the place. Might be able to get at it. 5% today. SPX making a little move lower. I'm going to put an order in to close my time fly at 325. I don't think that's going to hit. Uh, 
but I'll leave it sit. We'll see what happens. Profit target for the long FOMC strangle is at 13.75. Mine's trading pretty close to where I entered. Mine's trading at about nine bucks. So you are, you had the 40.65. Okay, so you're a strike higher on each one. That makes sense. Need a little continuation lower. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, just I'm gonna, like I like I uh, like the back test shows. I'm going to either hit my profit target or let that strangle expire. Hopefully, the former. So for tomorrow, which is the 21st, so no live stream in the morning, and then. Um, but we will stream tomorrow for Power Hour. All right, all. Good luck on your current trades. Hope they hit. I'll post when mine hits. Uh, otherwise, chat with you soon. Cheers.